think for this record we had about like 40 ideas that we went pretty hard with. The record pretty much came together in about, let's say, three months, four months. This new record that we just did feels like a band. It sounds like men playing drums and guitars and, and it sounds like dudes singing, you know what I mean? It doesn't sound processed. Um, I feel like their last records don't even sound anywhere close to as good as this is going to sound. far back as like Warp Tour last summer, um, coming on the bus and hearing Zach and Nick, you know, like playing through songs and talking about different songs and stuff. Well, usually Zach or I will write a song. And whoever it was is like, I have this idea of something like really catchy, or maybe I have this idea of something that's a really good thing to say. He'll come, he'll come up with half of it or the full thing. Same with me. I usually take a little bit of time. I'm usually pretty critical about my shit. Zach can like write a bunch of songs faster than I can. But me and him are like, dude, that'd be good. It's so cool to say this. Whoa! Steve was uh, never really out of the picture. We worked with him on the on the last record we did, and I think right after that we already knew that we were gonna do it again. And uh, where are we gonna do the record? Where are we gonna? We were thinking about going to California for a while. It was a thing. Get a house and uh, be recording some house and live on the beach. And yeah, it would be sweet. But with who to help us? I guess it was like around work tour last year. And we chill with Title Fight, and they just got done recording Full Green here. So we were listening to it, and they were like raving about Will and telling us to check him out, and we did. Uh, he did a lot of other stuff that we really liked. He did the new Circus Survive, he did Title Fight, um, some other bands that we really enjoyed. And that really just kind of like sealed the deal for where we wanted to track this record. We met Will, me and like Justin did first, I think. And we were like, he's really cool. And we told Steve and everybody else in the band, I think, you know, his studio, everybody knows his studio sounds good. Is he cool? We're like, yeah, Will's awesome. So they, uh, they hit me up and they say, hey, we want to work together and work on the next record. And I said, fuck yeah, let's do it. You know, we, we all dug each other's vibe and all worked out. You know? <laughs> Shut the fuck up, motherfucker, you're doing an interview here. Uh, Something like that. Ian's always fun to hang out with. He came out for a week to just chill. Ian, when we did the last record, Ian said that he wanted to come and hang out and he, it, he ended up not coming. So this time he said, hey okay, man, I'm gonna come and hang out. Like, I'm kind of free between the 25th and the 31st, and then it was kind of like, well, okay, we'll just come the 25th and the 31st. And then I was just like, all right, fine. I'm coming up. Uh, he told me he wanted to use his frequent flyer miles. I said, yeah, do it. And he goes, you have to do it for me. Justin booked my flight with my miles and used my credit card, and, like, he did everything. Ian, on Warp Tour, would hang out with Man Overport every day. And when we started talking about this new record, he was always like telling him we wanted to play a song on bass. And they were always like, yeah, of course, like, you should come hang out. And he did play on the song, he plays on Creepy. I picked the song that I liked, and then Nick was like, yeah, you can't do that one. And he like wanted to play, I was like, nah, dude, you can't play it. I was like, I feel like I killed it, and he was like... But yeah, that's the one that I kind of wanted to do. And he's like, yeah, but you can't do that one. And I'm Jewish, so I like to give the Jewish guilt trip. Dude, I flew out here. He's, I flew out here, man. You know, so I'd be like, oh yeah, you know, be cool if I can do creepy, you know. It'd be cool, you know, but if Nick won't let me play that one, and then it came into like, all right, dude, like, just play it so you'll shut up and we don't have to hear it anymore. It wasn't a strong battle for it. Will is 
<laughs> Will is a little robot to me. I just feel like the Neve. That's always the Neve. It's all I ever talked about is the, is, the, is the board. It always, you know. Mixing boards and microphones and he loves tracking stuff and audio files and he's a, he's a machine. Fucking sharp, man. Still sharp, man. It's flat, man. Almost there, man. One more time, man. The Neve, dude, the Neve. The drum sounds so good. You know, I grew up on Nirvana records. I grew up, you know, working on, on a Neve console. I grew up with that two-inch machine back there. You know, even though Rock and Rolls was now, I always had a sense of, you know, analog feeling rock records. And um, I didn't feel that from the old records. I think uh, this record is completely different from the, the other Mano records. Zach's, you know, he's the, I don't know, it's hard to explain what Zach is. Zach walks in every day, sucking man, sucking man, sits down, dude, you know what, you know what I was fucking thinking, dude, if we fucking write a song that's like, we call it like fucking, dude, we call it fucking Pink Girl Bunny Rabbit, dude, we'll make fucking tons of money, dude, I'm fucking telling you, man. Zach's the guy that writes these, like, amazing songs, and then on the other hand, sometimes you're like, yo, like, stand still, take this picture, and he's like, you know, And then I'll be like, dude, I watched this fucking documentary. Dude, let me tell you about the whole fucking thing. I'll tell you about the whole fucking documentary. So then you don't have to watch it. Yeah, it was super impressive. And he hit so hard, it hit so well. Damn, Zach. Just creeping <laughs> up on my shit. He didn't even look up. He didn't even look up. Nick is not the person in the band that I've known the longest. But he is probably the person that I spend the most one-on-one -on -one time with. They roll up to the mic like with the e-cig in hand, fucking. <laughs> you just do this vine, fucking. <laughs> Smoking the electronic cigarettes, man. Every time Nick sang, I had a feeling this was gonna be a first take. Every harmony note, I was pretty, I was pretty sure I was gonna get it the first or second try. Dude, this wants watermelon flavor. <laughs> this is fuck. It like coats my voice, man. Nick, A.K.A. the Pest. Always like pranking people, always like keeping people awake basically. Nick gets in this mode where like say we'll be driving in the van, all of a sudden like you'll see him like if I'm driving the van I'll see him sit up in the back. He's definitely gonna come along and like probably smack you to wake you up or something like that. He's just doing it to because to get a reaction out of me. Because I'm the only one who doesn't get mad at him. Everybody is like yeah. everybody calls him a pest and stuff, but I think he's so funny. You Nick Brazazi man. I'm fucking crazy, man. Like, you know, but, um, but it was fun. Dude, dude, Swain. What's up, dude? What's up, dude, man? <laughs> I was looking for you. I didn't know it was like that. I'm sorry. Swain. <laughs> oh, man. Mr. Mr. Sh General Swain. Well, Wayne's also, I would say, like, our feeling guy. Like, he always feels strongly one way or another about something. It's gotta breathe, brother. It's gotta breathe, brother. It's gotta breathe. The song's too fast. It's just too fast. I don't know. I'm jammed up. I'm jammed up, man. Oh my god. Anger. Cleanliness. Hunger. I mean, he's like, you know, I feel like he's the passion of the band. I feel like he's very passionate about what he does. But he is it's so easy to upset. Let's just do it. I'm just saying, at the end of the day, when we're fucking listening back and we feel like a bunch of fucking little girls, man, don't say I didn't fucking tell you it was playing too fast. Wayne's like the most passionate fucking person. And he um, he picked me up at the airport. And then he's like, yeah, wait outside. I'm, ro I'm rolling it hot. So I went outside. He showed up like 20 minutes later. <laughs> by fucking freezing my ass off outside the airport. I'm coming in hot. What do you mean coming in hot? You're not even here. Joe, 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 Joe's great. Joe's uh, Joe's one one the best drummers I had in, in a while. He, he he played so well. Dude is quiet as hell. He's just a super quiet dude. I think because he just plays really loud drums. Like when he talks to you, he's just like super quiet, he's really whispering.
he killed it on this record. Um, I don't know. I think that's one of the things that really like stepped up as far as Man Overboard on this new record is the drumming is I don't know, super tight and heavy and like intricate and not boring. It's really cool. Dude, Justin, man. I don't really do it, Justin. Justin is the uh he's the suit of the band, you know, he's the he's the computer. Definitely like the father of the band I feel as far as like just telling everybody what's what's the deal with like the day-to-day -day thing on tour. And he's always on the phone, he has like three phones, like a beeper. Yo, um, hey Dom, can you, can you forward me uh, the uh, Incendia, Jixer uh, thing? He's the, uh, he's a businessman. He's a businessman behind, behind the band. Um, he's, he's, he's the manager, he's a very talented guy. He's very strategical. He's very smart, very intelligent. Guarantees and the back end of things and percentages, and that is his world. He'd be like, did you guys hear that Alternative Press is doing a fucking interview with uh, the guy from the band? <laughs> and we're like, is that what's happening? Steve. Steve. Fucking Steve. Uh, great guy, class act. Talented guy. Will, play it again. Play it one more time to the speakers, please. I'm sorry, Will. Hey, turn up the speakers. Turn up the speakers. I'm sorry, we'll turn up the speakers. I knew, I knew, I knew she was, I knew she was. Do you like that? She, she won't, she won't. She Wait, one more time, Will. I'm fucking sorry, man. Do you like, do you like, it's your band. It's your band. I, in 30 years, you gotta listen to it. I have my band. I'm in a band. It's your band. What are you gonna start the song with? She won't. Upstairs? No. She walks down the stairs! <laughs> yeah, Will? Will? Zach? Will? We have the fucking coolest job out of anyone, you know what I mean? We get to travel, see the world, and play, play these shows. In terms of education and your family who was, you know, supporting you through college and having a relationship with somebody and stuff, it definitely becomes uh, pretty unique in that you don't get to see people a lot and a lot of the relationships that you've built can be tested because you're gone eight or nine months out of the year. One of the things I always enjoyed doing was like producing and just being a part of the music making process. Um, I work every day and you know when I take a day off I just want to be here anyway. It's like uh, it's, a, it's a fucking privilege to do that. Work at Studio 4 is a dream come true you know. Um, it, it gave me the you know inspiration to want to do more. And now this is my, my fourth record, and I have another record coming up. And in terms of the songs, I think there's some songs from each record that are kind of reflected on this record. As far as like where the band's been, I feel like we like see the success we've had, and like I feel like we want to overcome it. It's not not Man Overboard, but it's still um, new and fresh. So I think that's cool. Like I think we're growing and evolving as a band. So I'm really excited and proud of them for like, you know, sticking it out and, and being patient. It's still man overboard, it's just the next step. <laughs>